Sir, be not out with me. Yet if you be out, sir, I can mend you. What meanest thou by that? Mend me, thou saucy fellow. Why, sir, cobble you. Thou art a cobbler, art thou? Truly, sir, all that I live by is with thee all. But wherefore art not in thy shop today? Why dost thou lead these men about the street? Truly, sir, to wear out their shoes to get myself into more work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, sir. We make holiday to see sin, uh, uh, to rejoice in his triumph. What conquest brings he home? What tributaries follow him to Rome to grace and captive bonds his chariot wheels? You blocks. You stone. You worse than senseless things. Oh, you hard hearts. You cruel men of Rome. Knew you not Pompey. But many a time and oft have you not climbed up to walls and battlements to see great Pompey pass the streets of Rome. And when you saw his chariot but appear, have you not made an universal shout? And do you now put on your best attire? And do you now call out the holiday? And do you now throw flowers in his way that comes in triumph over Pompey's blood? Be gone. Go, go, good countrymen. And for this fault, assemble all the poor men of your sort. Draw them to Tiber banks and weep your tears into the channel. To the lowest streams do kiss the most exalted shores of all. See where their base of metal be not moved? They vanish tongue-tied in their guiltiness. Go you that way towards the capital. This way will I. Disrobe the images of you to find them decked with ceremonies. May we do so. You know it is the feast of Blooper. It is no matter. Let no images be hung with 
Caesar's trophy. All about to drive the vulgar from the street, so do you too, where you perceive them thick. These growing images plucked from Caesar's wings will make him fly an ordinary pitch. Who else would soar above the view of men and keep us all in servile fearfulness? Stand you directly in Antonius' way when he doth run his course. Antonius. Caesar, my lord. Forget you not in your speed to touch Calpurnia. For our elders say the baron touched in this holy chase will shake off their sterile curse. I shall remember. When Caesar says do this, it is performed. Set on and leave no ceremony out. Mark, peace, what noise? Let every noise be still. Peace, shut again. Who is it that calls? I hear a voice shriller and all the crowd cry Caesar. Speak, Caesar is turned to hear. Beware the eyes of March. Who is this fellow? As soon as uh, bid you, beware the eyes of March. Bring him before us, let me see his face. Fellow, come from the throng. Look upon Caesar. Well, fellow, what have you to say? Speak. Beware the eyes of March. <laughs> well, he is a dreamer. <laughs> Let us leave him. Pass! <laughs> Will you go see the order of the course? Not I. I pray you do. I am not gamesome. I do lack some part of that quick spirit that is an enemy. Uh, let me not hinder Cassius, your desires. I'll leave you. Uh, Brutus, I do observe you now of late. I have not from your eyes that gentleness and show of love as I was wont to have. Cassius, be not deceived. If I have veiled my look, I turn the trouble of my countenance merely upon myself. Vexed I am of late with passions of some difference, conceptions proper only to myself, which give some soil, perhaps, to my behaviors. But let not, therefore, my good friends be grieved, among which number, Cassius, be you one. Then nor Brutus. construe any further my neglect than that poor Brutus, with himself at war, forgets the shows of love to other men. Then, Brutus, I have much mistook your passion. Tell me, good Brutus, can you see your face? No, Cassius, for the eye sees not itself, but by reflection, by some other things. It is just, and it is very much lamented, Brutus that you have no such mirrors as will turn your hidden worthiness into your eye, that you might see your shadow. I have heard where many of the best respect in Rome, except immortal Caesar, speaking of Brutus, have wished that noble Brutus had his eyes. Into what dangers would you lead me, Cassius, that you would have me look into myself for that which is not in me? Uh, therefore, good Brutus, be prepared to hear. And since you know you cannot see yourself so well as by reflection, I, your glass, will modestly discover to yourself that of yourself which you yet know not of. What means the shouting? I do fear the people choose Caesar for their king. Aye, do you fear it? Then must I think you would not have it so? I would not, Cassius. And yet I love him well. But wherefore do you hold me here so long? What is it you would impart to me? If it be aught to the general good, set honor in one eye and death in the other, and I will look on both indifferently. For let the gods so speed me, as I love the name of honor more than I fear death. Well, honor is the subject of my story. I cannot tell what you and other men think of this life. But for my single self, I had as lief not be, as live to be in awe of such a thing as I myself. I was born free as Caesar, so were you. 
We both have fed as well, and we can both endure the winter's cold as well as he. For once, upon a raw and gusty day, the troubled Tiber chafing with her shores, Caesar said to me, Darest thou, Cassius, now, leap in with me into this angry flood and swim to yonder point? Upon the word, accoutred as I was, I plunged in and bade him follow. So indeed he did. But ere we could arrive, the point proposed. Caesar cried, Help me, Cassius, or I sink! I, as Aeneas, our great ancestor, did from the flames of Troy, upon his shoulders the old Anchises bear. So from the waves of Tiber did I the tired Caesar. And this man is now become a god. And Cassius is a wretched creature, and must bend his body if Caesar carelessly, but nod on him. Ye gods, it doth amaze me. A man of such a feeble temper should so get the start of the majestic world and bear the palm alone. Another general shout. I do believe these applauses are for some new honors that are heaped on Caesar. <laughs> Why, man, he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus. And we petty men walk under his huge legs and peep about to find ourselves dishonorable graves. Men at some time are masters of their fates. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. Brutus and Caesar. What should be in that Caesar? Why should that name be sounded more than yours? Now, on the names of all the gods at once, upon what meat doth this our Caesar feed, that he has grown so great? When could they say till now that talked of Rome, that her wide walls encompassed but one man? That you do love me. I am nothing jealous. But what you would work me to, I have some aim. How I have thought of this and of these times, I will recount hereafter. For this present I would not, and so I would with love entreat you, be any further moved. What you have said, I will consider. What you have to say, I will with patience hear, and find a time both meet to hear and answer such high things. Till then, noble friend, chew upon this. Brutus had rather be a villager than repute himself a son of Rome under these hard conditions as this time is like to lay upon us. I am glad that my weak words have struck but thus much show of fire from Brutus. The games are done, and Caesar is returning. As they pass by, pluck Casca by the sleeve, and he will, after his sour fashion, tell you what hath proceeded worthy note today. I will do so. But look, you Cassius, the angry spot doth glow on Caesar's brow, and all the rest are as a chidden train. The Casca will tell us what the matter is. Antonius. Caesar! Antonius, let me have men about me who are fat. Sleek-headed men that sleep at night. Yon Cassius has a lean and hungry look. He thinks too much. Such men as he are dangerous. Fear him not, Caesar. He is not dangerous. He is a noble Roman and well given. Would that he were fatter. But I fear him not. Yet, if my name were liable to fear, I do not know the man I should avoid so soon as that spare Cassius. He reads much. He is a great observer. He looks quite through the deeds of men. He loves no plays as thou dost, Antony. He hears no music. Seldom he smiles. And when he smiles, he mocks himself and scorns the spirit that should smile at anything. Such men as he are never at heart's ease when they see one greater than themselves, and therefore he is very dangerous. I'd rather tell thee what it is to be feared than what I fear. For always I am Caesar. But come upon my right side, <laughs> for this here is death. And tell me truly, what dost thou think of him? Hold me by the cloak. You speak with me. Aye, Casket. Tell us where it chanced today that Caesar looks so sad. Why, you were with him, were you not? I should not then ask Casco what hath chanced. Why, a crown was offered him. And, being offered him, he put it by with the back of his hand. Thus, then the people fell a shouting. What was the second noise for? Why, for that too. Uh, they shouted thrice. What was the last cry for? Why, for that? Two. Was the crown offered him thrice? Aye. Mary was. And he put it by. Thrice. Uh, who offered him the crown? 
By Anthony. Tell us the manner of it, General Casca. It's mere foolery. I did not mark it. I saw Mark Antony offer him a crown. Yet, twas not a crown neither, twas one of these uh, coronets. And, as I told you, he put it by once. But, for all that, to my thinking, he would fain have had it. Then he offered it to him again, and he put it by again. But, for all that, to my thinking, he was very loath to lay his fingers off it. Then he offered it the third time. He put it the third time by, and still, as he refused it, the ramblement hooted and threw up their sweaty nightcaps and uttered such a deal of stinking breath because Caesar refused the crown that it had almost choked Caesar. For he swooned and fell down at it. And for mine own part, I durst not laugh for fear of opening my lips and receiving the bad air. Uh, but soft, I pray, what? Did Caesar swoon? He fell down in the marketplace and foamed at the mouth and was speechless. <laughs> Tis very like he hath the falling sickness. No, Caesar hath it not. But you and I and honest Casca, we have the falling sickness. I don't know what you mean by that. But I'm sure Caesar fell down. But what said he when he thus came away? Married. Before he fell, when he perceived the common herd was glad, he refused to crowd. He plucked me up his doublet and offered them his throat to cut. And so he fell. When he came to himself again, he said if he had done or said anything amiss, he desired their worships to think it was his infirmity. After that, he came thus sad away. Aye. Uh, did Cicero say anything? Aye, he spoke Greek. To what effect? Nay, if I tell you that, I'll never look you in the face again. But. Those that understood him smiled at one another and shook their heads. But for my own part, it was Greek to me. <laughs> I could tell you more news, too. Morellus and Flavius, the pulling scoffs of Caesar's images, are put to silence. Very well. Uh, there was more foolery yet, if I could remember it. Uh, Will you sup with me tonight, Casca? No, I am promised for. Will you dine with me tomorrow? Aye, if I'd be alive. Would your mind hold and your dinner worth the eating? Good, I will expect you. Do so. Farewell, both. What a blunt fellow has this grown to be. This rudeness is a sauce to his good wit, which gives men stomach to digest his words with better appetite. And so it is. For now, I will leave you. Tomorrow, if you would please speak further, I will come home to you. Or if you will, come home to me and I will wait for you. I will do so. Uh, till then, think of the world. Well, Brutus, thou art noble. Yet I see thy honorable metal may be wrought from that it is disposed. I will this night in several hands, in at his windows throw, as if they came from several citizens, writings all tending to the great opinion that Rome holds of his name, wherein obscurely Caesar's ambition shall be glanced at. And after this, let Caesar seat him sure, for we will shake him, or worse days endure. Why, saw you anything more wonderful? The common slave, you know him well by sight, huh? held up his left hand, 
which did flame and burn like twenty torches joined. And yet his hand, not sensible of fire, remained unscorched. Besides, I had not since put up my sword against the capital. I met a lion which did blaze upon me and then went surly by without annoying me. Indeed, it is a strange disposed time. But men may construe things after their fashion, clean from the purpose of the things themselves. Uh, comes Caesar to the capital tomorrow. He doth. He did bid Antonius and word you that he would be there tomorrow. Good night, then. Casca, this disturbed sky is not to walk in. Farewell, oh, Cicero. A very pleasing night to honest men. But whoever knew the heavens menace so? To those who have known the earth so full of faults. For my part, I have walked about the streets, submitting me unto the perilous night, and thus, embraced cask as you see, have bared my bosom to the thunderstone. When the cross blue lightning seemed to open the breast of heaven, I did present myself, even to the aim and very flash of it. Wherefore did you so much tempt the heaven? You are dull, Casca. And those sparks of life that should be in a Roman, you do lack, or else you use not. You look pale and games and put on fear and cast yourself in wonder to see the strange impatience of the heavens. But if you would consider the true cause, why all these fires, why all these gliding ghosts, why all these things change from their ordinance to monstrous quality, why you shall find the heaven hath infused them with these spirits to make them instruments of fear and warning unto some monstrous state. Now could I cast a name to thee a man most like this dreadful knight, a man no mightier than thyself or me in personal action, yet prodigious groan and fearful as these strange eruptions are. To Caesar that you mean. Is it not, Cassius? Let it be who it is. Indeed, they say the senators tomorrow mean to establish Caesar as a king. He shall wear his crown by sea and land, and every place save here in Italy. I know where I will wear this dagger, then. Cassius from bondage will deliver Cassius. That part of tyranny that I do bear, I can shake off that pleasure. So can I. So every bondman in his own hand bears the power to cancel his captivity. And why should Caesar be a tyrant, then, poor man? I know he would not be a wolf, but that he sees the Romans are but sheep. What trash is Rome? What rubbish and what awful when it serves for the base matter to illuminate so vile a thing as Caesar. But, oh grief, where hast thou led me? I perhaps speak this before a willing bondman. You speak to Casca, and to such a man that is no fleering telltale. Hold my hand. And I will set this foot of mine as far as who goes farthest. There's a bargain made. Now know you, Casca, I have moved already some certain of the noblest-minded Romans to undergo with me an enterprise of honorable, dangerous consequence. And I do know by this they stay for me in Pompey's porch. A close while for him, wine and haste. Oh, Tis Cinna, I do know him by his gate. He is a friend. Cinna, where haste you so? Find out you. Who's that? Metellus Simber? Uh, no, it is Casca, one in corporate to our attempts. Am I not stayed for, Cinna? I am glad, aunt. What a fearful night is this. This two or three of us have seen strange sights. Am I not stayed for? Tell me. Yes, you are. Oh, Cassius, if you could but win the noble Brutus to our part. Be you content. Good Cinna, uh, take this paper and look you lay it in the praetor's chair where Brutus may but find it. And throw this in at his window. Set this up with wax upon old Brutus' statue. All this done, repair to Pompey's porch where you shall find us. Uh, is Decius Brutus and Trebonius there? All but Matilla Simber, who's gone to seek you at your house. Well, I will hie and so bestow these papers as you bade me. All done, repair to Pompey's theater. 
Uh, come, Casca. You and I will yet a day see Brutus at his house. Three parts of him is ours already. And the man entire upon the next encounter yields him ours. Lucius, who? I cannot by the progress of the stars give guess how near today. Lucius, I say. I would have been my fault to sleep so soundly. When, Lucius? When? Awake, I say. What, Lucius? Hold you, my lord. Get me a taper in my study, Lucius. When it is lighted, come and call me here. I will, my lord. It must be by his death. But for my part, I know no personal cause to spurn at him. But for the general, he would be crowned. Now that might change his nature, there's the question. It is the bright day that brings forth the adder and that craves wary walking. Crown him. That. And then I grant we put a sting in him that at his will he may do danger with. The abuse of greatness is when it disjoins remorse from power. And so Caesar may, then lest he may, prevent. And therefore think him as the serpent's egg, which hatched, would as his kind grow mischievous, and kill him in the shell. The taper burneth in your closet, sir. In searching the window for a flint, I found this paper thus sealed up. And I am sure it did not lie there when I went to bed. Get you to bed. It is not yet day. Is it not tomorrow, boy, the Ides of March? I know not, sir. Look in the calendar and bring me word. I will, sir. Brutus, thou sleepst. Awake and see thyself. Shall roam, etc. Speak, strike. Redress. Brutus, thou sleepst. Such instigations have often been dropped where I have took them up. Shall roam, etc. Well, thus must I piece it out. Shall roam, stand under one man's awe. What? Roam. Speak, strike, redress. Am I entreated to speak and strike? O Rome, I make thee promise that if the redress will follow, thou receivest thy full petition at the hand of Brutus. Sir, March is wasted fifteen days. It is good. I'll get you to the gate, somebody knocks. Since Cassius first did whet me against Caesar, I have not slept. Between the acting of a dreadful thing and the first motion, all the interim is as a phantasma or a hideous dream. Sir. Tis your brother Cassius at the door, who doth desire to see you. Is he alone? No, sir. There are more with him. Do you know them? No, sir. Their faces are buried in their cloaks, that by no means I may discover them. Let him enter. They are the faction. O conspiracy, shames thou to hide thy dangerous brow by night, when evils are most free. O then by day, where wilt thou find a cavern dark enough to hide thy monstrous visage? Seek not conspiracy. Hide it in smiles and affability. I think we are too bold upon your rest. Good morrow, Brutus. Do we trouble you? I have been up this hour, awake all night. Know I these men that come along with you? Yes, every man of them. This is Trebonius. He is welcome hither. This Decius Brutus. He is welcome too. This Casca, this Cinna, and this Metellus Simber. They are all welcome. What watchful cares to interpose themselves betwixt your eyes and night? Uh, shall I entreat a word? Here lies the east. Doth not the day break here? No. Oh, pardon, sir, it doth. And yon gray lines that frit the clouds are messengers of day. You shall confess that you are both deceived. Here, 
as I point my sword, the sun arises, which is a great way growing on the south. Give me your hands, Oliver, one by one. And let us swear our resolution. No, not an oath. If not the faces of men, the sufferings of our souls, the time's abuse, if these be motives weak, then break off the times, and every man hence to his idle bed. And so let high-sighted tyranny range on till each man drop by lottery. But if these, as I'm sure they do, bear fire enough to kindle cowards, and to steal with valor the melting spirits of women and countrymen, what spur other than our own cause do we need we to prick us to redress? What other bond than secret Romans that spoke the word and will not palter? What other oath than honesty to honesty engaged that this shall be? Or we will fall for it. Uh, but what of Cicero? Shall we sound him? I think he will stand very strong with well, us. Let us not leave him out. No, by no means. Oh, let us have him. For his silver hairs will purchase us a good opinion and buy men's voices to commend our deeds. Uh, let us not break with him. Name him not, for he will never follow anything that other men begin. Then leave him out. Indeed, he is not fit. Shall no man else be touched, but only Caesar. Oh, Decius, well urged. I think it is not meet that Mark Antony, so well beloved of Caesar, should outlive Caesar. Which to prevent, let Antony and Caesar fall together. Our course will seem too bloody, Caius Cassius, to cut the head off and then hack the limbs. For Antony is but a limb of Caesar. Let us be sacrificers, but not butchers, Caius. We all stand up against the spirit of Caesar. And in the spirits of men there is no blood. Oh, that then we could come by Caesar's spirit and not dismember Caesar. But alas, Caesar must bleed for it. We're gentle friends. Let's kill him boldly, but not wrathfully. Let's carve him as a dish fit for the gods, not hew him as a carcass fit for hounds. For Mark Antony, think not of him, for he can do no more than Caesar's arm when Caesar's head is off. Yet I fear him, for in the engrafted love he bears to Caesar. Alas, could Cassius think not of him. And there is no fear in him. Let him not die, for he will live and laugh at this hereafter. Peace. Count the clock. The clock hath stricken three. It is time to part. Uh, but it is doubtful yet whether Caesar will come forth today or no. For he is superstitious grown of late. The unaccustomed terror of this night may hold him from the capital today. Never fear that. If he be so resolved, I can or sway him. Let me work, for I can give his humor the true bent, and I will bring him to the capital. And nay, we will all of us be there to fetch him. Upon the eighth hour, is that the uttermost? Be that the uttermost, and fail not then. Caius Ligarius, doth bear Caesar hard, who rated him for speaking well of Pompey. I wonder none of you have thought of him. Ah, good Metellus. Bring him but hither. He loves me well, and I have given him reasons. Bring him but hither, and I will fashion him. The morning comes upon us. We'll leave you, Brutus. And friends, disperse yourselves, but all remember what you have said, and show yourselves true Romans. And gentle friends, let's look fresh and merrily. Let not our looks put upon our purposes, but bear it as our Roman actors do, with untired spirits and formal constancy. And so good morrow to you, everyone. <sighs> Lucius! Ho! Oh! Still asleep. It is no matter. Enjoy the honey-heavy dew of slumber. Brutus, my lord. Portia, what mean you? Wherefore rise you now? It is not for your health thus to commit your weak condition to the raw cold morning. Nor for yours neither. You have ungently, Brutus, stole from my bed. And yesternight at supper you suddenly arose and walked about musing and sighing with your arms across. And when I asked you what the matter was, you stared upon me with ungentle looks. I urged you further than you scratched your head and too impatiently stamped with your foot. Yet I insisted, yet you answered not, but with an angry wafture of your hand gave sign for me to leave you. So I did, fearing to strengthen that impatience which seemed too much enkindled. Dear my lord,
Make me acquainted with your cause of grief. I am not well in health, that is all. Well, Brutus is wise. And were he not in health, he would embrace the means to come by it. Or well, so I do. Good Portia, go to bed. Is Brutus sick? And is it physical to walk unbraced and suck up the humors of the dank morning? No, my Brutus. You have some sick offense within your mind, which by the right and virtue of my place I ought to know of. And upon my knees I, I charm you by my once commended beauty, by all your vows of love, and by that great vow which did incorporate and make us one that that you unfold to me, yourself, your half, why you are heavy. And what men tonight have had resort to you, for here have been some six or seven who did hide their faces even from darkness. Kneel not, gentle Portia. I should not need if you were gentle Brutus. Within the bond of marriage, tell me, Brutus, is it accepted I should know no secrets that appertain to you? Dwell I but in the suburbs of your good pleasure? Well, if it be no more, then Portia is Brutus' harlot, not his wife. You are my true and honorable wife, as dear to me as are the ruddy drops that visit my sad heart. If this be true, then should I know the secret? I grant I am a woman, but withal a woman Lord Brutus took to wife. I grant I am a woman, but withal a woman well-reputed, Cato's daughter. Think you I am no stronger than my sex, being so fathered and so husbanded? Tell me your counsels, I will not disclose them. I have made strong proof of my constancy, giving myself a voluntary wound here in the thigh. Can I bear that with patience and not my husband's secrets? Ye gods, render me worthy of this noble wife. Hark, hark, somebody knocks. Uh, Portia, go in a while. And by and by, thy bosom shall partake the secrets of my heart. All my engagements I shall construe to thee all the charactery of my sad brows. Leave me with haste. Lucius, who's that knocks? Here's a sick man who would speak with you. Caius Ligarius, the Batellus spoke of. Boy, stand aside. Caius Ligarius. How? How safe. Good morrow from a feeble tongue. Oh, what a time have you chose out, my Caius. Would that you were not sick. I am not sick if Brutus haven't had any exploit worthy the name of honor. Such an exploit have I in mind, Ligarius, had you a healthful ear to hear of it. Oh, by all the gods that Romans bow before, I hear discard my sickness. What's to do? A piece of work that will make sick men whole. Oh, 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 but but uh, are not some whole that we must make sick? That we must also. When it is, my Caius, I will unfold to thee as we are going to whom it must be done. Set on your foot, and with a hot new fire I follow. To do uh, I know not what, but it sufficeth that Brutus leads me on. Follow me then. Calpurnia cried out in her sleep, Help, ho, oh, they murdered Caesar! Who's within? My lord. Go. Bid the priest do present sacrifice, and then return with their opinion of our success. I will, my lord. What mean you, Caesar? Think you to walk forth? You shall not stir out of your house today. Caesar shall go forth. For these things that do threaten me, Ne'er but look upon my back. When they see the face of Caesar, they are banished. Caesar, 
I never stood on ceremonies. Yet now, they fright me. There is one within, besides the things that we have heard and seen, recounts most horrid sights seen by the watch. A lioness hath whelped in the streets, and graves have yawned and yielded up their dead, and ghosts did shriek and howl about the streets. Oh, Caesar, these things are beyond all use, and I do fear them. What can be avoided whose end is purposed by the mighty gods? Yet Caesar shall fall. For these predictions are to the world in general as to Caesar. When beggars die, there are no comet seen. The heavens themselves blaze forth the death of princes. Cowards die many times before their death. The valiant never tasted death but once. How now? What says the Argurus? They would not have you to stir forth today. Plucking the entrails of an offering forth, they could not find a heart within the beast. The gods do this in shame of cowardice. Caesar should be a beast without a heart. Caesar should stay at home today. No. Caesar shall not. Caesar shall go forth. Alas, my lord. Your wisdom is consumed in confidence. Do not go forth today. Call it my fear that keeps you in the house and not your own. We'll send Mark Antony to the Senate house and he shall say that you are not well today. Oh, let me upon my knee prevail in this. Mark Anthony shall say, I am not well. And for thy humor, I shall stay at home today. Uh. <laughs> uh. Well, here's Decius Brutus, he'll tell them so. Caesar, all hail. Good morrow, worthy Caesar. I come to fetch you to the Senate House. Mm. Well, you've come at a very happy time to bear my greetings to the Senators. Uh, tell them, Decius, I will not come today. Say he is sick. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, shall Caesar send a lie? Decius, tell them I will not come. Most mighty Caesar, let me know some cause, lest I be laughed at when I tell them so. The cause? is in my will. I will not come today. That is enough to satisfy the Senate. <sighs> but for thy private satisfaction, and because I love you, I will let you know. Calpurnia here, my wife, keeps me at home today. She dreamt last night that she saw my statue, which, like her fountain with a hundred spouts, did run pure blood. And many lusty Romans did come smiling and did bathe their hands in it. And upon her knee, she had begged me to stay at home today. This dream is all misinterpreted. It was a vision fair and fortunate. Your statue, spouting blood from many fights, signifies that from you, great Rome shall suck, reviving blood. <laughs> this by Calpurnia's dream was signified. Well, well, that way you've expounded. I have. And when you hear what I can say and know it now, the Senate have concluded to give this day a crown to mighty Caesar. If you send word you will not come, their minds may change. Besides, if we're a mock apt to be rendered for someone to say, break up the Senate till another time when Caesar's wife shall meet with better dreams. How foolish do your fears seem now, Calpurnia. I'm ashamed I almost did yield to them. Bring me my robe, for Caesar shall go forth today. Well, here comes Publius to fetch me to the Senate House. Good morrow, Caesar. Good morrow, Publius. <laughs> what, Brutus, art thou stirred so early? <laughs> Casca, Caius Ligeris. <laughs> what o'clock is it? Jesus, Caesar, it has struck in an eight. Well, I thank you for your pains and courtesies. <laughs> Antony, look. Well, Antony, who revels long a night, is not worth standing up. Good morrow, Antony. So too, most noble Caesar. Uh, bid them prepare within. <laughs> I am to blame to be thus waited upon. Uh, sinner, uh, Simba, uh, Trebonius. What, Trebonius? I have an hour's talk in store for you today. Uh, be close by me. Remember to call upon me that I might remember you. Caesar, I will. <laughs> My good friends, go in with me and taste some wine. And we, like friends, shall straightway go together. Caesar, beware of brute. 
Cassius. Take heed of Cassius. I'm not near Casca. Have an eye to Cinna. Trust not Trebonius. Mark well Metellus Simba. Decius Brutus loves thee not. Thou hast wronged Gaius Agarius. There's but one mind in all these men, and it is bent against Caesar. The mighty gods defend thee, thy friend Artemidorus. Here will I stand while Caesar pass along, and as a suitor will I give him this. If thou read this, O Caesar, thou mayst live. If not, the fates with traitors do contrive. Run, boy. I for thee run to the capital. Stay not to answer me, but get thee gone. Why dost thou stay? To know my errands, madam. I would have had thee there and here again, ere I can tell thee what thou shouldst do there. Oh, Constancy, be strong upon my side. Set a huge mountain between my heart and tongue. Art thou here yet? Madam, what should I do? Run to the capital and nothing else, and so return to you and nothing else? Yes. Bring me word, boy, if thy lord look well, for he went sickly forth. And take good note what Caesar doth, what suitors press to him. Hark, boy, what noise is that? I hear none, madam. I heard a bustling rumor, like a fray, and the wind brings it from the capital. Sooth, madam, I hear nothing. Come hither, fellow. Which way hast thou been? At mine own house, good lady. What is to clock? About the ninth hour, lady. Is Caesar yet gone to the capital? Madam, not yet. I go to take my stand to see him pass on to the capital. Well, thou hast some suit to Caesar, hast thou not? Aye, lady. If it will please Caesar to be so good to Caesar as to hear me, I shall beseech him to befriend himself. Well, why? Knowest thou any harms intended towards him? None that I know will be. Much that I fear may pass. Good morrow to you. Here the street is narrow. The throng that follows Caesar at the heels will crowd a feeble man almost to death. I'll get me to a place more void and there speak to great Caesar as he comes along. Oh, I must go in. Oh, Brutus, the heavens speed thee in thine enterprise. Sure, the boy heard me. Brutus hath a suit which Caesar will not grant. Oh, I grow faint. Run, Lucius. Commend me to my lord. Say I am merry. Come to me again and bring me word what he doth say to thee. Eyes of March have come. Aye, Caesar, but not gone. Hail, Caesar! Read this schedule. The Trebonius doth desire you to overread at your best leisure this his humble suit. Oh, Caesar, read mine first, for mine's a suit that touches Caesar nearer. Read it, great Caesar. What touches us ourselves shall be last served. Delay not, Caesar! What, is the fellow mad? What, urge you your petitions in the street? Come to the capital! I wish your enterprise today may thrive. What enterprise, Popelius? Fare you well. What says Popelius Lena? He wished today our enterprise might thrive. I fear our purpose is discovered. Mm -hmm. Look how he makes to Caesar. Mark him! Casca, be sudden, for we fear prevention.
Brutus, what shall be done? If this be known, Cassius or Caesar never shall turn back, for I will slay myself. Cassius, be constant. Papilius Laner speaks not of our purposes, for see, he smiles, and Caesar doth not change. Trebonius knows his time, for look you, Brutus, he draws Mark Antony out of the way. Where is Metellus Simber? Let him go and presently prefer his suit to Caesar. He is addressed. Press near and second him. Yes. You are the first that rears your head. Well, are we ready? Now, what is it that Caesar and his Senate must redress? Most high, most mighty, and most puissant Caesar. I must prevent thee, Simber. Be not so fond to think that Caesar bears in him that rebel blood that will be thawed from the true quality with that which melteth fools. I mean, sweet words, low crooked courtesies and base spaniel fawnings. Thy brother was banished by decree. If thou dost kneel and pray and fawn for him, I spurn thee like a cur out of my sight. Know that Caesar does not wrong, nor without cause will he be satisfied. Is there no voice uh, more worthy than my own to sound more sweetly in great Caesar's ear for the repealing of my banished brother? I kiss thy hand, but not in flattery, Caesar. Desiring thee that Publius Simber may have an immediate freedom of repeal. What, Brutus? Uh, pardon, Caesar. Caesar, pardon. As low as to thy foot doth Cassius fall to beg liberation for Publius Simber. <laughs> I could be well moved if I were as you. If I could pray to move, then prayers would move me. But I am as constant as the northern star, constant that Simba should be banished, and constant to remain to keep him so. Oh, Caesar! Hence will thou lift up Olympus. Great Caesar! What will Brutus bootless kneel? Be can for me! Ah! Ah! Caesar should change. Also understanding. With Publius good cheer. There is no harm intended to your person or to no Roman else. So tell them, Publius. And leave us, Publius, lest that the people rushing on us should do your age some mischief. Do so. And let no man abide this deed, but we the doers. Where is Antony? Fled to his house amazed. Stoop, Romans. Stoop. And let us bathe our hands in Caesar's blood up to the elbows and we smear our blades. And then walk we forth, even to the marketplace, and waving our red weapons o'er our heads, let's all cry, peace, freedom, and liberty! Stoop then, and wash. How many times shall Caesar bleed in sport, which now lies on Pompey's basis alone, no worthier than the dust? So oft as that shall be, so often shall the knot of us be called the men that gave their country liberty. What? Shall we forth? Aye, every man away. Soft you. Who comes here? A friend of Antony's. Thus, Brutus, did my master bid me kneel. Thus did Mark Antony bid me fall down. And being prostrate, thus he bade me say, Brutus is noble, wise, valiant, and honest. Caesar was mighty, bold, royal, and loving. Say I love Brutus, and I honor him. Say I feared Caesar, honored him, and loved him. 
If Brutus will vouchsafe that Anthony may safely come to him and be resolved how Caesar hath deserved to lie in death, Mark Anthony shall not love Caesar dead so well as Brutus living. So says my master Anthony. Thy master is a wise and valiant Roman. I never thought him worse. Tell him, so please him, come unto this place. He shall be satisfied. And by my honor, depart untouched. I'll fetch him presently. I know we shall have him well to friend. I wish we may. But yet have I a mind that fears him much, and my misgivings still fall shrewdly to the purpose. Here comes Antony. Welcome, Mark Antony. Almighty Caesar, dost thou lie so low? Are all thy conquests, glories, triumphs, spoils shrunk to this little measure? Fare thee well. I know not, gentlemen, what you intend. Who else must be let blood? Who else is rank? If I myself, there is no hour so fit as Caesar's death hour. Live a thousand years, I shall not find myself so apt to die. Oh, Antony, beg not your death of us. For though now we must appear bloody and cruel, as by our hands and this our present act you see we do, yet see you but our hands and this the bleeding business they have done. Our hearts you see not. They are pitiful. And pity to the general wrong of Rome hath done this deed on Caesar. For your part, to you, our blades have leaden points, Mark Antony. Our arms of strength and malice and our hearts of brother's temper do receive you in all kind love, good thoughts and reverence. Your voice shall be as strong as any man's in the disposing of new dignities. Only be patient till we have appeased the multitude beside themselves with fear. Then we will deliver to you the cause why I that did love Caesar when I struck him have thus proceeded. I doubt not your wisdom. Let each man render me his bloody hand. First, Marcus Brutus, who I shake with you. Next, Caius Cassius, do I take your hand. Now, Decius Brutus, yours. Now yours, Metellus. Your sinner. And my valiant Casca, yours. Though last, not least in love, yours, good Trebonius. Gentlemen all, alas, what shall I say? My credit now stands on such slippery ground that one of two bad ways you must conceit me, either a coward or a flatterer. That I did love thee, Caesar, oh, tis true. If then thy spirit look upon us now, shall it not grieve thee dearer than thy death to see thy Antony making his peace, shaking the bloody fingers of thy foes? Mark Antony! Pardon me, Caius Cassius. I blame you not for praising Caesar so. But what compact mean you to have with us? Will you be pricked in number of our friends? Or shall we on and not depend on you? Friends, am I with you all and love you all upon this hope that you shall give me reasons why and wherein Caesar was dangerous. Our reasons are so full of good regard that were you, Antony, the son of Caesar, you would be satisfied. That's all I seek. And a moreover suitor that I may produce his body to the marketplace and in the pulpit, as becomes a friend, speak in the order of his funeral. You shall, Mark Antony. But Brutus, a word with you. You know not what you do. Do not consent that Antony should speak in his funeral. Know you how much the people may be moved by that which he will utter. Under your pardon, I will myself to the pulpit first to give the reasons for our Caesar's death. What Antony shall speak, I will protest he does so by our leave and our permission, and that we are content that Caesar shall have all true rites and lawful ceremonies. It shall advantage more than do us wrong. I know not what may fall. I like it not. Mark Antony. To take you, Caesar's body. You shall not, in your funeral speeches, blame us, but speak all good you can devise of Caesar. And you shall speak in the same pulpit whereto I am going, after my speech is ended. Be it so, I do desire no more. Prepare the body then and follow us.
Oh, pardon me, thou bleeding piece of earth, that I am meek and gentle with these butchers. Thou art the ruins of the noblest man that ever lived in the tide of times. Woe to the hand that shed this costly blood. Over thy wounds, now do I prophesy, a curse shall light upon the limbs of men. Domestic fury and fierce civil strife shall cumber all the parts of Italy. And Caesar's spirit, ranging for revenge, shall in these confines, with a monarch's voice, cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. That this foul deed shall smell above the earth with carrion men groaning for burial. You saw of Octavius Caesar also, do you not? I do, Mark Anthony. Caesar did right for him to come to Rome. He did receive his letters, and it's coming. And bid me say to you, by word of mouth... Oh! Caesar! Thy heart is big. Get thee apart and weep. Is thy master coming? He lies tonight within seven leagues of Rome. Post back with speed and tell him what it's chanced. Here is a morning Rome, a dangerous Rome. No Rome of safety for Octavius yet. Hi, hence, and tell him so. Yet stay a while. Thou shalt not back till I have borne this course into the marketplace. There shall I try in my oration how the people take the cruel issue of these bloody men. According to the which thou shalt discourse to young Octavius of the state of things. Lend me your hand. that you may believe. Censure me in your wisdoms and awake your senses that it may the better judge. If there be any here in this assembly, any dear friend of Caesar's, to him I say Brutus' love to Caesar was no less than his. If then that same friend should demand why Brutus hath rose against Caesar, this is my answer. Not that I love Caesar less, but that I love Rome more. Had you all rather Caesar were living and die all slaves than that Caesar were dead and live all free men? As Caesar loved me, I do weep for him. As he was fortunate, I rejoice at it. As he was valiant, I honor him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. There is tears for his love, joy for his fortune, honor for his valor, and death for his ambition. Who is here so base that would be a bondman? If any speak for him, have I offended? Who here so rude that would not be a Roman? If any speak for him, have I offended? Who here so vile that would not love his country? If any speak for him, I have offended. I pause for a reply. I have done no more to Caesar than you shall do to Brutus. The question of his death is enrolled in the capital. His glory is not extenuated wherein he was worthy, 
nor his offenses enforced, for which he suffered death. Here comes his body. Mourned by Mark Antony, who though he had no hand in Caesar's death, shall receive the benefit of his dying, as which of you shall not a place in the commonwealth. With this I depart, that as I slew my best lover for the good of Rome, I have that same dagger for myself, when it shall please my country to need my death. No, 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 no. Let me depart alone. For my sake, stay here with Antony. Do grace to Caesar's corpse, and grace his speeches tending to Caesar's glories, which Mark Antony, by our permission, is allowed to make. I do entreat you, not a man depart, till Antony have spoken. No, 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 no. Beholding to us all. We are blessed that Rome is rid of him. Hey. Hey. Let us hear what noble Antony can say. Hey. You Lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do live after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault. And grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here, under leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honorable man, so are they all, all honorable men. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me, but Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. He hath brought many captives home to Rome, whose ransoms did the general coffers fill. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor have cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. But Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. You all did see that on the Lupercal I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and sure he is an honorable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but here I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withholds you then to mourn for him? O oh, judgment, thou art fled to brutish beasts, and men have lost their reason. Bear with me. My heart is in the coffin there with Caesar, and I must pause till it come back to me. We think there is much reason in his saying. Aye. If thou consider rightly of the matter, Caesar has had great wrong. As he, masters, I fear there will a worse come in his place. Mark ye his word? He will not accept the crown, therefore it is certain. He was not ambitious. Aye. If it be found, so some will dare abide it. Poor soul. His eyes are in his fire with weeping. There's not a noble man in Rome that Anthony... Mark, he oh, begins to get his feet. But yesterday, the word of Caesar might have stood against the world. Now lies he there, and none so poor to do him reverence. Oh, masters, 
If I were disposed to stir your hearts and minds to mutiny and rage, I should do Brutus wrong and Cassius wrong, who you all know are honorable men. I will not do them wrong. I rather choose to wrong the dead, to wrong myself and you, than I will wrong such honorable men. But here is a parchment with the seal of Caesar. I found it in his closet. Tis his will. Let but the commons hear this testament, which, pardon me, I do not mean to read. And they would go and kiss dead Caesar's wounds and dip their napkins in his sacred blood. Yea, beg but a hair of him for memory, and dying mention it within their wills, bequeathing it as a rich legacy unto their issue. We'll hear the will. Read it, Mark Antony. Have patience. Have patience, gentle friends. I must not read it. It is not meet you know how Caesar loved you. It will inflame you. It will make you mad. It is good, you know not, that you are his heirs, for if you should, oh, what would come of it? I fear I wrong those honorable men whose daggers have stabbed Caesar, I do fear it. Traitor! Honorable men! You will compel me then to read the will. Then make a ring about the corpse of Caesar, and let me show you him that made the will. Shall I descend, and will you give me leave? Nay, press not so upon me, stand far off. If you have tears, prepare to shed them now. You all do know this mantle. I remember the first time ever Caesar put it on. Look, in this place ran Cassius' dagger through. See what a rent the envious Casca made. Through this, the well-beloved Brutus stabbed. For Brutus, as you know, was Caesar's angel. Judge, O oh you gods, how dearly Caesar loved him. This was the most unkindest cut of all. For when the noble Caesar saw him stab, in gratitude, more strong than traitor's arms quite vanquished him. Then burst his mighty heart, and in his mantle, muffling up his face, even at the base of Pompey's statue, which all the while ran blood, great Caesar fell. Oh, what a fall was there, my countrymen. Then I and you and all of us fell down, whilst bloody treason flourished over us. Oh, now you weep, and I perceive you feel the dint of pity. Look you here. Here is himself, marred, as you see, with traitors. Oh, oh pitiful spectacle! No, Caesar! No, no, bloody sight! Oh. Traitors! Villains! We will be revenged! Sweet friends! Let me not stir you up to such a sudden flood of mutiny! They that have done this deed are honorable. Oh, what what oh, private God. griefs they have, alas, I know not, that made them do it. They are wise and honorable and will no doubt with reasons answer you. Oh, I come not, friends, to steal away your hearts. I am no orator as Brutus is, for I have neither wit nor words nor worth to stir a man's blood. But were I Brutus and Brutus Antony, there were an Anthony would ruffle up your spirits yeah. and put a tongue in every wound of Caesar yeah. that should move the stones of Rome to rise and mutiny! Yeah. You hear me, countrymen? You hear me speak? Peace, most noble Anthony, hear most noble Anthony! You have forgot the will I told you of! The will! The will! Here's the will! 
and under Caesar's seal. To every Roman citizen he gives, to every several man, 75 drachmas. Hear me with patience. Moreover, he hath left you all his walks, his private arbors, and new planted orchards on this side Tiber. He hath left them you and to your heirs forever. Here was a Caesar. When comes such another? And with the brass, fire the traitors' houses! Take up the body! <laughs> now let it work. Mischief thou art afoot. Take thou what course thou wilt. How now, sir? Sir, Octavius is already come to Rome. Where is he? He and Lepidus are at Caesar's house. And thither will I straight to visit him. I heard him say Brutus and Cassius are rid like madmen through the gates of Rome. Be like they had some notice of the people, how high it moved them. Bring me to Octavius. I dreamt tonight that I did feast with Caesar, and things unluckily did charge my fantasy. I have no will to wander forth the doors, yet something leads me forth. What is your name? Where are you going? Where do you dwell? Are you a married man or a bachelor? Answer every man directly. Aye, and briefly. Aye, and wisely. Aye, and truly you were best. What is my name? Whither am I going? Where do I dwell? Am I a married man or a bachelor? Well, to answer every man, briefly and directly, wisely and truly, wisely I say, I am a bachelor. <laughs> That's as much to say, they are fools that marry. You'll bear me a bang for that, I fear. Ah! <laughs> Proceed directly. Directly, I'm going to seize the view. As a friend or an enemy? As a friend. Uh, that matter is answered directly. For your dwelling briefly. Briefly, I dwell by the capital. Your name, sir, truly. Truly, my name is Sinna. Mm. Tear him to pieces. He is a conspirator. Oh, hey! I am Sinna the poet. I'm Sinna the poet. then shall die. Their names are pricked. Your brother too must die. Consent you, Lepidus? I do consent. Prick him down, Antony. Upon condition, Publius shall not live. Who is your sister's son, Mark Antony? He shall not live. Look, with a spot, I damn him. But Lepidus, go you to Caesar's house and fetch the will hither. And we shall determine how to cut off some charge and legacies. What? Shall I find you here? Or here or at the capital. This is a slight, unmeritable man. Meet to be sent on errands. Is it fit the threefold world divided? He should stand one of the three to share it. So you thought him and took his voice who should be pricked to die in our black sentence and prescription. Octavius, I have seen more days than you. Though we lay these honors on this man, he shall but bear them as the ass bears gold. And having brought our treasure where we will, then take we down his load and turn him off, like to the empty ass, to 
shake his ears and graze in commons. You may do your will, but he's a tried and valiant soldier. <laughs> so is my horse, Octavius. It is a creature that I teach to fight, to whine, to stop, to run directly on. His corporal motion governed by my spirit, and in some taste is lepidus, but so. Do not talk of him but as property. Now, Octavius, listen. Great things. Brutus and Cassius are levying powers. We must straight make head. Therefore, let our alliance be combined, and let us presently go sit in council, where covert matters may be best disclosed, and open perils surest answer it. Let us do so, for we are at the stake, and bait about with many enemies. And some that smile have in their hearts, I fear, millions of mischiefs. Is Cassius near? He is at hand, and Pindorus has come to do you salutations from his master. He greets me well. Your master, Pindarus, hath given me worthy cause to wish things done undone. But if he be at hand, I shall be satisfied. I do not doubt but that my noble master will appear, such as he is, full of regard and honor. He is not doubted. A word, Lucilius. Yes, my lord. How he received you, let me be resolved. With courtesy and with respect enough, but not with such familiar instances, nor with such free and friendly conference as he hath used of old. Thou hast described a hot friend cooling. Mm. Comes his army on. They mean this night in Sardis to be quartered. The greater part, the horse in general, are come with Cassius. Hark, they are arrived. March on gently to meet them. Stand ho! Speak the word along. Stand! 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 Most noble brother, you have done me wrong. Judge be ye gods, wrong I am mine enemies, and if not so, how should I wrong a brother? Brutus, the sober form of yours hides wrongs, and when you do Cassius, not... Cassius, be content. Speak your grief softly. I do know you well. Before the eyes of both our armies here, let us not wrangle. Bid them move away, and under my tent, Cassius, enlarge your griefs. Pindarus, bid our commanders lead their charges off a little from this ground. Lucilius, do you the like, and let no man come near our tent, save we alone. Lucilius and Titinius, guard our door. That you have wronged me doth appear in this. You have condemned and noted Lucius Pella for taking bribes here of the Sardians, where in my letters, praying on his side because I knew the man, was slighted off. You wronged yourself to write in such a case. Oh, in such a time as this, it is not meet that every small offense should bear his comment. Now let me tell you, Cassius, you yourself are much condemned to have an itching palm, to sell and mart your offices for gold to undeservers. I an itching palm? Remember, March. The Ides of March, remember. Did not great Julius bleed for justice' sake? What villain touched his hand that did stab and not for justice? And what are we now to contaminate our fingers with base bribes, selling the mighty space of our large honors for so much trash as may be grasped thus? I had rather be a dog and bay at the moon than such a Roman. Brutus, bait not me, I'll not endure it. I am a soldier older in practice, abler than yourself to make conditions. Go to, you are not, Cassius. I am. I say you are not. Urge me no more, I shall forget myself. Away, slight man. It's possible. Kill me, for I will speak. Must I give way and room to your rash color? Shall I be frighted when a madman stares? Oh, ye gods, ye gods! Must I endure all this? All this! Aye, more! Fret to your proud heart break! Go make your bondman tremble! Must I budge? Must I observe you? Must I stand and crouch under your testy humor? By the gods, you shall digest the venom of my spleen, though it do split you. For from this time forth, I will use you for my mirth, yea, for my laughter when you're waspish. Is it come to this? You say you are a better soldier. Let it appear so. 
You wrong me every way. You wrong me, Brutus. I said an elder soldier, not a better. Did I say better? If you did, I care not. When Caesar lived, he durst not thus have moved me. Please, please. You durst not so have tempted him. I durst not. No. What well, durst not tempt For your me? For you durst not. Do not presume too much upon my love. I may do that I shall be sorry for. You have done that you should be sorry for. I did send to you for certain sums of gold, which you denied me. For I can raise no money by vile means. I did send to you for gold to pay my legions, which you denied me. Was that done like Cassius? Should I have answered Caius Cassius? So? I denied you not. You did. I did not. He was but a fool that brought my answer back. <laughs> Brutus hath thrived my heart. A friend should bear his friend's infirmities, but Brutus makes mine greater than they are. I do not until you practice them on me. You love me not. I do not like your faults. A friendly eye could never see such faults. A flatterer's would not, though they appear as huge as high Olympus. Come! Antony and young Octavius, come! Revenge yourselves alone on Cassius. But Cassius is a weary of the world. Hated by one he loves, braved by his brother, checked like a bondman, all his faults observed, uh, set in a notebook, learned in con by rote to cast into my teeth, though I could weep my spirit from mine eyes. There's my dagger, and here my naked breast. Dig it forth! I that denied thee gold would give my heart. Strike as thou didst at Caesar. For I know, when thou didst hate him worst, thou lovest him better than ever thou lovest Cassius. Sheath your dagger. Be angry when you will. It shall have scope. Do what you will. Dishonor shall seem humor. Cassius. You are yoked with a lamb that carries anger as the flint bears fire, who much in force it shows a hasty spark, and then straight is cold again. Have Cassius lived to be but mirth and laughter to his Brutus, when grief and blood ill-tempered vexeth him? When I spoke that, I was ill-tempered too. Do you confess so much? Give me your hand. And my heart, too. Oh, Brutus. What's the matter? Have you not love enough to bear with me when that rash humor which my mother gave me makes me forgetful? Yes, Cassius. And from henceforth, when you are over earnest with your Brutus, he'll think your mother chides and leave you so. Lucilius and Titinius. Prepare to bid the commanders lodge their companies tonight. And come yourselves and bring Masala with you immediately to us. Lucius, a bowl of wine. I did not think you could have been so angry. Cassius, I am sick of many griefs. Of your philosophy you make no use if you give place to accidental evils. No man bears sorrow better. Portia is dead. Oh. Portia? She is dead. How oh, escaped thy killing when I crossed you so? Upon what sickness? Impatient of my absence. And grief that Octavius and Mark Antony have made themselves so strong, for with her death those tidings came. With this she fell distract, and her attendants absent. Swallowed fire. And died so? Even so. Oh, ye immortal gods! Speak no more of her. Lucius a bowl of wine. In this, I will bury all unkindness, Cassius. My heart is thirsty for that noble pledge. Fill Lucius to the wine or swells the cup. I cannot drink too much of Brutus' love. Come in, Titinius. Welcome, good Masala. Now sit we close about this taper here and call in our several necessities. 
Portia, art thou gone? No more, I pray you. Miss Sala, I have here received letters that young Octavius and Mark Antony are with a mighty power come down upon us, bending their expeditions toward Philippi. Myself with letters of the self-same tenor. With what addition? That by prescription and bills of outlawry, Octavius, Antony, and Lepidus are put to death in hundred senators. Well, therein our letters do not well agree. Mine speak of seventy senators that died by their prescriptions. Cicero one. Uh, Cicero what? Cicero is dead. By that order of prescription. Had you your letters from your wife, my lord? No, Miss Allah. No, nothing in your letters rid of her? Nothing, Miss Allah. That be things are strange. Well, I ask you, hear you aught of her and yours? No, my lord. Now, as you are a Roman, tell me true. Then, like a Roman, bear the truth I tell. For certain she is dead. By strange manner. My farewell, Portia. We must die, Messala. With meditating that she must die once, I have the patience to endure it now. Even so. Great men, great losses should endure. Well, to our work alive. What think you of marching toward Philippi presently? I do not think it good. Your reason? This it is. Tis better the enemy seek us, so shall he waste his means, uh, weary his soldiers, doing himself offense, whilst we, lying still, are full of rest, defense, and nimbleness. Of good reasons must a force give way to better. And the people which twixt Philippi and this ground do stand but then a forced affection, for they have grudged us contribution. Now, the enemy marching along by them shall by them a fuller number make up. Come on refreshed, new added, and encouraged. From which advantage shall we cut him off if at Philippi we do face him there, these people at our back? Uh, hear me, good brother. Under your pardon. You must know beside that we have tried the utmost of our friends. Our legions are brimful, our cause is ripe. The enemy increaseth every day. We at the height are ready to decline. And with your will, go on. We'll along ourselves and meet them at Philippi. The deep of night have crept upon our talk. There is no more to say? No more. Good night. Early tomorrow we will rise and hence. Lucius, my gown. Farewell, good Masala. Good night, Titinius. Noble, noble Cassius. Good night and good repose. Oh, my dear brother. This was an ill beginning of the night. Never come such division between our souls. Let it not, Brutus. Everything is well. Good night, my lord. Good night, good brother. Good night, Lord Brutus. Good night, my lord. Farewell all. Give me my gown. Where is thy instrument? In the tent. Well, speaks thou drowsily? Poor knave, I blame thee not, thou art o'erwatched. Call young Cato and some of my men. I'll have them sleep on cushions in my tent. Borrow and young Cato! Close, my lord. Come in, good sirs, and lie in my tent and sleep. It may be I shall raise you on business by and by to my brother Cassius. So please you, we will stand and watch your pleasure. I would not have it so. Lie down, good sirs. I may be otherwise bethink me. Look, Lucius. Here is the book I sought for, so I put it in the pocket of my gown. I was sure your lordship did not give it me. Bear with me, good boy. I am much forgetful. Canst thou hold up thy heavy eyes a while and touch thy instrument to strain or two? Aye, my lord, if to please you. It does, my boy. I trouble thee too much, but thou art willing. It is my duty, sir. I should not urge your duty past your might. I know young bloods look for a time of rest. I have slept, my lord, already. It was well done. And thou shalt sleep again. I'll not hold thee long. This is a sleepy tune. Oh, murderous slumber. Layest thou thy leaden mace upon my boy that plays thee music. <sighs> Gentle knave. Good night. Let me see. Let me see. Is not the leaf turned down? We're left off reading. 
Here it is, I think. Who comes here? Speak to me what thou art. Thy evil spirit, Brutus. Why comes thou? To tell thee thou shalt see me again at Philippi. Then I shall see thee again. Aye. At Philippi. Why then I shall see thee at Philippi then. Your spirit! I will hold more talk with thee! Boy! Bow, young Cato! Sirs, awake, young Cato! The strings, my lord, are false. He thinks he is still at his instrument. Lucius, awake! My lord? Dost thou dream, Lucius, that thou so criedst out? My lord, I do not know that I did cry. Yes, that thou didst, dost thou see anything? Nothing, my lord. <laughs> Sleep again, Lucius. Sirrah! Young Cato! Bow! Sirrah, awake! My lord, my lord! Did you see anything that you so cried out in your sleep? Nay, my lord, I saw nothing. Nor I, my lord. Saw you anything? Nay, my lord, nothing. No. Commend me to my brother Cassius. Bid him sit on his power be times before, and we will follow. It shall be done, my lord. Aye, my lord. are answered. You said the enemy would not come down, but keep the hills and upper regions. It proves not so. Their battles are at hand. They mean to warn us at Philippi here, answering before we do demand of that. them. That! I am in their bosoms and know wherefore they do it. They could be content to visit other places and come down with fearful bravery, thinking by this face to fasten in our thoughts that they have courage. But it is not so. Prepare you generals, the enemy comes on in gallant show. Their bloody sign of battle is hung out, and something to be done immediately. Octavius, lead your battle softly on upon the left hand of the even field. Upon the right hand, I keep thou the left. Why do you cross me in this exigence? I do not cross you, but I will do so. Titinius, we must out and talk. Mark Antony, shall we give sign of battle? No, Caesar, we shall answer on their charge. Make forth! The generals will have some words. Stir not until the signal. Words before blows, is it not so, countrymen? Not that we love words better, as you do. Good words are better than bad strokes, Octavius. In your bad strokes, Brutus, you give good words. Witness the holes you made in Caesar's heart, crying, Long live, hail Caesar. Mark Antony, the posture of your blows are yet unknown. But for your words, they rob the hybla bees and leave them honeyless. Not stingless, too. Oh, yes, and soundless, too. Villains, you did not sow when your vile daggers hacked one another in the sides of Caesar. You showed your teeth like apes and fawned like hounds and bowed like bondmen kissing Caesar's feet while damned Casca, like a cur behind, struck Caesar on the neck. Oh, you flatterer. Come, come, the cause. If arguing make us sweat, the proof of it will turn to red or drops. Look. I draw a sword against conspirators. When think you that the sword goes up again? Never till Caesar's three and thirty wounds be well avenged. Or till another Caesar have added slaughter to the sword of traitors. Well, thou canst not die by traitors' hands, Caesar, unless thou bring them with thee. So I hope. 
I was not born to die on Brutus' sword. Oh, if you were the noblest of your strain, young man, you could not die more honorable. The peevish schoolboy, worthless of such honor, joined with a masker and a reveler. <laughs> Old Cassius still. Huh? Come, Anthony, away! Defiant! Traitor! Hurl we in your teeth! If you dare fight today, come to the field! If not, when you have stomachs. <laughs> when I blow wind, swell below and swim bark! Hark, Massilius, the word. Masala. Masala, this is my birthday. As this very day was Cassius born. Give me your hand, Masala. Be thou my witness. That against my will, as Pompey was, am I compelled to set upon one battle all our liberty. Even so, Lucilius. Now, most noble Brutus, the gods today stand friendly, that we may, lovers in peace, lead on our days to age. But since the affairs of men rest still uncertain, let's reason with the worst that may befall. If we do lose this battle, then is this the very last time that we shall speak together? What are you then determined to do? Even by that rule of that philosophy by which I did blame Cato for the death which he did give himself. I know not how, but I do find it vile and cowardly for fear of what may fall, so to prevent the time of life. Then if we lose this battle, you are contented to be led in triumph through the streets of Rome? No. Cassius, no. Think not, thou noble Roman, that ever Brutus shall go bound to Rome. He bears too great a mind. But this day must end the work the Ides of March began. And whether we shall meet each other again, I know not. And therefore let us our everlasting farewell take. Forever and forever farewell, Cassius. If we do meet again, why, we shall smile. And if not, well then this parting was well made. Forever and forever farewell, Brutus. If we do meet again, we'll smile indeed. If not, tis true, this parting was well made. Well then, lead on. Oh, that a man might know the end of this day's business, ere it come. But suffice it, the day will end. And then the end is known. yonder troops and here again, that I may rest assured whether yonder troops are friend or enemy. I will be here again even with a thought. Go, Pindarus, get higher on the hill. My sight was ever thick. Regard to Tinius and tell me what thou notest about the field. This day I breathed first. Time has come round. Where I did begin, there shall I end. 
My life is run his compass. Sarah, what news? My lord. What news? Titinius is enclosed and round about with horsemen that wait for him on the spur. Yet he spurs on. Now they're almost on him. Now Titinius. Now some light. Oh, he likes too. He's staying. And hark, they shout for joy. Come down, behold no more. A coward that I am to live so long, to see my best friend ten before my face. Come hither, Sarah. In Parthia did I take thee prisoner, and then I swore thee saving of thy life, that whatsoever I did bid thee do, thou shouldst attempt it. Come now, keep thine oath. Now be a free man, and with this good blade that ran through Caesar's bowels, search this bosom. Stand not to answer. Here, take thou the hilt. And when my face is covered, as it is now, guide thou the blade. Caesar, thou art revenged, even with the blade that killed thee. So I am free. It would not so have been, dost I have done my will. O oh, Cassius, far from this country Pandarus shall run, where never Roman shall take note of him. It is but change, Titinius, for Octavius is overthrown by the noble Brutus' power, as Cassius' legions are by Antony. These tidings will well comfort Cassius. <laughs> Where did you leave him? Just consulate with Pindarus' bondman on this hill. Not that he that lies upon the ground. He lies not like the living. In my heart. It's not that he. No. This was he. Masala. But Cassius is no more. The setting sun is in thy red rays. Thou dost sink tonight. So in his red blood. Cassius' day is set. The sun of Rome is set. Our day is gone. Mistrust of good success hath done this deed. Where Pindarus? Where art thou, Pindarus? Take him, Titinius. Whilst I go to meet the noble Brutus, thrusting this report into his ears. Ah, you must all act. And I will seek for Pindarus the while. Why? Didst thou send me forth, brave Cassius? Did I not meet thy friends? And did not they put on my brows this wreath of victory and bid me give it thee? Didst thou not hear their shouting? Alas, thou hast misconstrued everything. Behold thee. Take thou this garland on thy brow. Thy Brutus bid me give it thee, and I will do his bidding. Brutus, come apace, and see how I regard it, Caius Cassius. By the leave of God, this is a Roman's part. Come, Cassius blade, and find Titinius heart. <laughs> Where? Where, Masala, let this body lie? Oh, yonder, Titinius warning. Titinius faces upward. He is slain. Oh, Julius Caesar. Thou art mighty yet. Thy spirit walks abroad and turns our swords in our own proper entrails. Brave Titinius, look where he hath not crowned dead Cassius. Are yet two Romans living such as these? The last of all the Romans, fare you well.
It is impossible ever should Rome should breed thy fellow. Countrymen, I owe more tears to this dead man than you shall see me pay. But I shall find time, Cassius. I shall find time. Come, therefore. You think so, send his body. His funeral shall not be in our camp. Let us discomfort us. Young Cato, come hither, Lucilius, come hither. Let us to the field. It is three o'clock, and Romans, yet at night, we shall try fortune with a second fight. that thou wilt kill me straight. Kill Brutus and be honored in his death. Who hath not? A noble prisoner. Make room. Tell Mark Anthony Brutus is taken. I'll tell the news. Here comes the general. Brutus is Dan. Brutus is Dan, my lord. Where is he? Safe, Anthony. Brutus is safe enough. I dare assure thee that no enemy shall ever take the noble Brutus alive. The gods defend him from so great a shame. When you do find Brutus, or alive or dead, he shall be found like Brutus, like himself. This is not Brutus, friend, but I assure you a prize no less in worth. Keep this man safe. Give him all kindness. I had rather have such men my friends than enemies. Go on and see where Brutus be alive or dead. And bring us word unto Octavia's tent how everything is chanced. Rock. Cecilia showed the torch light, but my lord, he came not back. He was retained or slain. Sit thee down, Plantis. Slaying is the word. It is a deed in fashion. Hark thee, Cletus. What? I, my lord? No. Not for all the world. Feast then no words. I'd rather kill myself. Hark thee, Dardanius. Shall I do such a deed? Oh, Dardanius. Oh, please. What ill request did Brutus make to thee? To kill him, Cletus. Look how he meditates. <laughs> now is that noble vessel so full of grief that it runs even over at his eyes. Come hither, Volumnius. List a word. What says, my lord? Oh, this it is, Volumnius. The ghost of Caesar hath appeared to me two several times by night, in Sardis once, and this last night in Philippi Fields. I know my hour has come. Not so, my, my lord. I am sure it is, Volumnius. 
I'll seize the world. Which way it goes? The enemy hath beat us to the pit. It's more worthy to leap in ourselves than tarry till he push us. The Volumnius, thou knowest we two went to school together. And even for that our love of old, I prithee, hold my sword hilt whilst I run on it. That's not an office for a friend, my lord. Fly, my lord, fly! There is no tarrying here. Farewell to you. And you, and, and you, Volumnius. Farewell to you too, Strato. Countrymen, my heart doth joy that yet in all my life I found no man that he was true to me. I shall have glory this losing day, more than Octavius and Mark Antony by this vile conquest shall attain unto. So fare you well at once, for Brutus' tongue hath almost ended his life's history. Night hangs upon mine eyes. My bones would rest, but have but labored to attain this power. Fly, my lord, fly! Hence, I will follow. I pray thee, good Strato, stay thou by thy lord. Thou art a fellow of a good respect. Thy life hath had some honor, some smatch of honor. I do pray thee, hold on my sword hilt and turn away thy face whilst I do run upon it. Wilt thou, Strato? Give me your hand first. Fare thee well, Strato. Well, my lord. with half so good a will. What man is that? My master's man. Jato, where's thy master? Freed from the bondage you are in, Miss Ella. The conquerors can make but a fire of him. For Brutus only overcame himself, and no man else hath honor by his death. So Brutus should be found. I thank thee, Brutus, that thou hast proved Lucilia saying true. All that serve Brutus, I will entertain them. Fellow, wilt thou bestow thy time with me? I, if Masala would prefer me to you. Do so, good Masala. I've died, my master, Strato. I held the sword, and he did run on it. Octavius, then take him to follow thee that did the latest service to my master. This was the noblest Roman of them all. All the conspirators save only he did what they did in envy of great Caesar. His life was gentle, and the elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to all the world, this was a man. According to his virtue, let us use him with all respect and rites of burial. Within my tent his bones tonight shall lie, most like a soldier ordered honorably. So call the field to rest, and let's away to part the glories of this happy day. <laughs> 